Hello. Today's topic is about large intestine secretions, function, formation of feces and mechanism of defecation. Before going in depths in this topic, it is useful to know about the overview of the large intestine. I am not going to discuss the details of the anatomy but rather what is important for the functional anatomy. So, let's go. The large intestine is about 6 cm in diameter and 100 cm in length. It consists of the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon and rectum. The iliocecal valve regulates the passage of material from the ileum which is the last segment of the small intestine. Other important thing to remember is the presence of simple tubular glands. The other details of anatomy I will discuss in the upcoming videos, so be sure to subscribe. Now, we have understood about the functional anatomy of the large intestine, we will look at the important physiological aspects that contribute to the stool formation. The first thing that you have to understand about large intestine is the secretions. Mucus is the chief secretion of the glands in large intestine. The main function is to lubricate the fecal matter. Mucus is also alkaline in nature due to the presence of bicarbonate ions. Why the alkaline nature is important? It is because the alkaline nature helps to neutralize the acids formed by bacterial action in the colon. You also can remember that the secretory activity of the large intestine is increased by the tactile stimulation of the mucosa. The effect is produced by a direct action on the surface epithelium and through local neural mechanism which will increase the secretion of the glands. Next, we will look at the absorptive function. The mucosa of the large intestine has a high capability for active absorption of sodium, and the electrical potential gradient created by absorption of the sodium causes chloride absorption as well. Absorption of sodium and chloride ions creates an osmotic gradient across the large intestinal mucosa, which in turn causes absorption of water. The large intestine can absorb up to 5 to 8 liters of fluid and electrolytes each day. When the total quantity entering the large intestine through the ileocecal valve exceeds this amount, the excess appears in the feces as diarrhea. You can watch my diarrhea video which I will link in the description below. Another important function of the large intestine is the production of vitamin K and some vitamin B complexes by the normal colonic bacteria. These bacteria especially colon bacilli, are present even normally in the colon. They are also capable of digesting small amounts of cellulose, in this way providing a few calories of extra nutrition for the body. The last function of large intestine is the storage function. Feces are stored in the rectum before they can be expelled through the anus. Now, we will look at the motility of the large intestine. Segmentation movements occur normally in large intestines and its frequency is only about 1 to 2 movements per minute. This is a peristaltic activity that can be observed in the large intestine which propels the contents towards the rectum. There is another movement known as mass peristalsis. Mass peristalsis lasts for about 3 minutes. During such movements, the intraluminal pressure is increased very much causing the colonic contents propelled towards the sigmoid colon. Usually these contractions are induced by gastrocolic reflex. What is gastrocolic reflex? Gastro means stomach and colic refers to the large intestine. Usually after eating, the lower gastrointestinal tract's motility is regulated by the gastrocolic reflex which is a physiological reflex. The gastrocolic reflex causes the colon to move more quickly in reaction to the stretching of the stomach brought on by eating. Because of this reflex, defecation after every feed is a rule in infants. This reflex is suppressed by toilet training in the childhood. Next important thing to consider is the transit time. It is the time taken by the food, in this case chyme to reach the large intestine. Most of the chyme reaches the cecum within 8 to 9 hours of food intake. 
From the cecum, the fecal matter is transported more slowly. Usually it takes another 8 to 14 hours to reach the sigmoid colon. Vegetarian foods shorten the time while non-vegetarian food prolongs it. Now, we will try to understand the mechanism of defecation. Usually, at least once a day, as a result of strong gastrocolic reflex, mass movement forces the feces into the rectum. Then, as the rectum slowly gets filled up with the fecal contents, the intrarectal pressure rises. The resultant rise in the intrarectal pressure produces an urge to defecate. The second way is that the rectum has stretch receptors. So, when the rectum is stretched with the amount of fecal contents, the stretch receptors got stimulated. The stimulation of the stretch receptor sends an impulse to the sacral center, in this case is S2. S2 then sends the efferent impulse through the parasympathetic nerves. The parasympathetic nerve signals initiate strong peristaltic waves which lead to the evacuation of the rectum. At the same time, the smooth muscles of the internal anal sphincter relax. This is the reflex defecation activity and is sufficient enough to expel the feces out. Now there are some important things to take note. Let us take an example of a normal healthy adult with a normal healthy large intestine. So, normally, defecation is assisted by respiratory muscles. Deep inspiration followed by the glottis and the contraction of the abdominal muscles, makes the intra-abdominal pressure to rise and as a result, that pressure forces the contents down the colon. Another thing to remember is that the contraction of the muscles of pelvic floor also helps to evacuate the feces out of the anus. The last important thing to remember is the external anal sphincter is innervated by pudendal nerves. This tells you that defecation is under voluntary control except in the case of infants. So, in a normal healthy adult, the external anal sphincter is normally closed. If it is not voluntarily relaxed, the defecation reflex dies out in a few minutes and does recur for several hours. Now, let us briefly understand the composition of feces. The feces normally composed of about 30% dead bacteria, 10 to 20% fat, 10 to 20% inorganic matter, 2 to 3% protein, and 30% undigested roughage from the food and dried constituents of digestive juices, such as bile pigment and sloughed epithelial cells. The brown color of feces is caused by stercobilin and urobilin which are the derivatives of bilirubin. The odor is caused principally by products of bacterial action and these products vary from one person to another, depending on each person's colonic bacterial flora and on the type of food eaten. The actual odoriferous products include indole, scatol, mercaptans, and hydrogen sulfate. As usual there are quiz questions. Pause this video and answer them. Comment your answers below. As usual please like, comment and subscribe if you find this video useful, as this will motivate me into doing more videos like this. Don't forget you can request your biology or medicine topics via the Google form that is linked in the description below. Thank you and see you all in the next video.